So you have been thinking about making money using Bitscap. Well, here's the thing. You cannot make money in what you don't understand how it works. Which is why when you get started on CBA, the first phase we dive in is called fundamentals. It is where we dive in into everything related to how the bot works. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I help to one of my CBA members go through the entire process when it comes to understanding the fundamentals. When it comes to the fundamentals, it is everything related to the features of the bot, optimization, learning how to set it up. That being said, let's get started. All right, so this is what we have. This is, these are some of the bots that I have running. Can I give you a quick breakdown? We have a few things. We have the investment, which is the current volume. We have total PNL, which is how much money the bot has generated over X amount of time. So this one, for example, is up 49.26%. We have bot profit. A bot profit is the um, accumulated profit the bot has generated, but in bot profit. Right? And total PNL is the total profit and loss. So if I was to shut down the bot, this is how much money I could make in a nutshell. Sure. We have average daily profit, how much money the bot is making daily. And then we have the status, which, well, this is how they look like. That's pretty much it. Most important thing is the bot must be on a status active to keep working. That is the goal. Now, when it comes to the bot, how it works is very straightforward. It's going to make buy and sell orders and the profit is going to be sent to your crypto wallet. So first, can you see all of these green and red dots? Yeah. So every green dot is going to be a buy order that the bot makes. So we have a buy order here, we have a buy order, and then every red dot is going to be a sell order. So as you can see, the dynamic is very straightforward. It's going to buy low when the market goes down, so you see a buy order, buy order, and a buy order. And as soon as it goes up, it's going to trigger a sell order and a sell order and a sell order and a sell order and so on. When it comes to the anatomy of the bot, we have three main things. We have a grid range, we have grid levels, and we have a grid step percentage. So let's go over that. In the grid step percentage, is going to be this one. Is the percentage in price action that the crypto bot is going to cover? That is the main understanding. That That's the main concept of grid range, right? So uh, the general idea is that the bigger the grid range, the more price action the bot is going to be able to cover, but the less profit you will be making because it's safer. And then we have the grid levels, right? Grid levels are all of these lines here where the bot is going to trigger an a buy and a sell order. And just one more thing, the difference between the buy and the sell, so the difference between this buy order and this sell order, this is called the grid step percentage. Is the profit per trade. You have any questions so far? Quick question, yeah. So the buy and sell order, I don't know, pick any, like pick a buy order on there. So the next sell order is when that that buy order is being sold or obviously choose the most optimal sell time. Yeah, that's a great question. So it's going to be ugly, but it's going to do the job. So, so we have the buy orders when the cryptocurrency goes down, right? So let's pretend this is market price, this blue line right here. So if the market goes down like this, bot is going to trigger a buy order when it goes down. So it's going to trigger a buy order here, a buy order and a buy order only when it touches the grid line. If it doesn't touch it, it's not going to trigger it. When the market goes up like this at the same market price, same market price, you deploy the bot, correct? Yeah. So when does it sell? So it's going to sell here. It's going to sell here and it's going to sell here. So it has a three sell orders in place. So it's sold here 
and this one here. Okay. Yeah, that's how it's able to make profit because it buys lows and it sells high. Okay. So it always buys lows and it sells high in, on the last sell order made. Okay. Yeah, indeed. And then we have the grid step percentage, which is really the difference between these two buy and sell orders. And then the grid range, which is the price range in, uh, sorry, the price action in percentage of the uh, that the bot is going to be covering in the in the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So when I onboard you on CBA, I mentioned about the three steps: like mm -hmm. finding the coin, getting the confirmations, and setting up the bot. Yeah. So when you're looking to, to find a coin, you're looking for as much volatility as possible that everything is compound and just moving within a grid range percentage. That's a money glitch, I man. Like it's it's insane. But uh, when I figured this out, I don't think I slept for like three days. I'm not even kidding. I think I found a money glitch. So it was pretty crazy. But uh, so when you have a coin, you have a dashboard of different options. These are the bot settings. You can see that right here. You have exchange you have the cryptocurrency you have the investment amount and you have the settings so well these three things are pretty straightforward now let's focus on these four things low price is going to be this one right here and high price is going to be this one this is what we call the grid range and you want to make sure you set it up always in a way that you only have one red line why? Because if you take a closer look at this, and I'm, you can see that if I have almost the same amount, the same amount of red lines and grid lines, my investment of four hundred dollars in this example is gonna be split to fifty percent, fifty percent. Okay. And you don't want to do that. You want to have as much safety as possible. So how you do that? is by taking your high price and moving all the way down until you have anywhere between one to three red lines. And now you can see a, almost 75% of my investment is in USDT and 25% is in the other pair that my bot is going to be trading. We use a tool called price range and you measure from the high price to the low price. That is the grid range percentage. It is 16%. Mm. So what is this telling you? It is telling you that the bot is going to cover 16% of the price action of the cryptocurrency because we're trading we're trading coins with a lot of volatility 16% can be quite risky because the bot can be out of grid and we're going to get into detail about that in a, on later but yeah so you want to ideally keep this above 30% for risk management but, but again we get into detail on how to set up the grid range on phase two. Okay. All right, so moving on, we have the grid step percentage and we have the grid levels. So grid levels basically means the amount of grid lines that you have here. So if I increase this to 50, you will see that it's going to be like crazy. So a lot of them. If I change this to 10, it's going to be fewer. And if I increase this to 30, it's going to be fairly stable. And as I change this, for example, if I increase this to 40, the grid step percentage is going to decrease. And it's going to decrease because the distance between each grid line is going to get smaller and smaller. So if I increase this to 40, it might be 0 0.90. Here we go. 0 0.92. If I um, decrease it to 20, it's 1.84, 10, and so on. Would you say the, the risk tolerance goes higher the more grid lines there are, or is it lower? Yeah, that's a good question. So the fewer the grid lines, the more distance between each grid a line, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning the higher the grid step percentage, meaning the higher the profit every time you make a trade. Now, okay. what is the downside of that? Is that because there is so much distance, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good profit overall and for the long term because the cryptocurrency might not be able to move as much as possible and you see it's quite a lot of distance so the bot needs to really be moving 
sorry, the cryptocurrency needs to be moving a lot to trigger those buy and sell orders. If we have something smaller, like 25, you can see how it's very likely going to trigger a buy and a sell order consistently. So to answer your question, the way you figure out the optimum settings, what it would really means with optimum settings is that the best grid range percentage and the best grid levels okay. is, is by backtesting. That's really all it comes down. So if I backtest this over the last seven days, you can see it's 6.67% with 25 grid levels. If I increase this to 35, it's 5.42. Or if I decrease this to 20, or actually let's go ahead and do 15, it's probably going to be about 7 or, yeah. So that is kind of like how you figure out. Again, the goal, and this is something you will, you will go through phase two, is to figure out the optimum settings of the bot meaning the, the perfect amount of grid levels so you can maximize profits and minimize as much possible as risk and also the grid range percentage. Beautiful. So then we have trading up, which essentially means when the cryptocurrency is going up in volume, um, the bot is going to follow along just like this. Um, it's something you have to keep it on check always protection because we're trading coins with a lot of volatility also on check trading down same but when the coin goes down right is something we don't recommend you to use if you're going to be trading high volatile coins and you want to make as much money and then just secure your profits stop loss we use and the profit uh, you could use but we don't but um yeah that's pretty much it. That's the anatomy of the bot in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you got value, which is the most important thing. Make sure to subscribe. And if you watch all the video until the end, it means you are serious about launching crypto bots and making a life changing money. If that's the case, then I strongly recommend you to click the first link in the description, book a call with me or anybody of my team and see if you are a good fit for CVA and we can actually help you in the first place. That being said, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.